All right. And we're live. <laughs> <laughs> we're just we're just parachuting in. No intro, no nothing. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the ward. Hi, Jen. Hi, Dr. B. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am. I'm doing good. I'm a little stressed, but I'm doing good for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it'll be it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Anything in particular that's stressing you out? <laughs> just just this next episode. It's very very convoluted, and uh, it's an it's annoying to me. And it was annoying to me fifty eleven hundred years ago when I went through it the thirty third time, and now it's annoying to me <laughs> <laughs> going through it the eighty millionth time. Like I'm just I don't. I'm just frustrated. I don't like the way this all like the. I just don't like the way it happened. It's annoying to me, and I I see the the holes and the inconsistencies and the errors, and I'm just thinking to myself, I'm not even a professional. So how did this get past professionals? And it's just annoying, and it puts me in a funk. <laughs> yes, the, I, I can I can uh, empathize with that because I feel the same way um, about going through the Kurt Cobain case and mm -hmm. looking at Courtney Love. So I definitely, definitely empathize with that. It's hard. And yes. So to for as a break for, for our brains, I figured, well, you know, Britney Spears came forward and she spoke in court today. Or um, was it yesterday? I, I don't feel, even know. I feel like it was today, but all my days have run together. And yeah, it, it, I what I don't even know what day we're on. What day are we even on? I don't know. It's somewhere <laughs> between <laughs> eleven D what is fifty eleven hundred and eleven D billion. <laughs> yeah. That's that's about how I feel. That's about right. <laughs> yeah. So yes, so she spoke out and we have um we have the audio from that um from that court hearing uh and i also prepared an article that we can kind of look at afterwards but the other reason why i wanted to talk about this is because courtney love has been quite vocal on her social media in support of britney and of course um you know who who isn't on the free britney uh, side come on now yeah but but it seems a little disingenuous yes and uh so i wanted us to listen to britney spears's experience from her own word from her own mouth and then i wanted to go back and look at some of courtney love's social media posts okay uh, regarding this topic and then we'll revisit um you know some blasts from the past like uh sam lutfi and his role in all of this how does that sound jen sounds like a plan stan let's do it awesome well just want to also quickly say hi to everyone in chat welcome welcome hi renee you're uh the real mvp amelia hi tiffy and bill jones welcome welcome mama molson bear. man mama bear everyone Hi, the analyst. Welcome, welcome. Melissa Jade. Yes, Renee says we need to do lives more often. We really do. We do. And we will. We we'll are. be better we about it. We're, we're um, both of us are working like on two different things and it tends to, <laughs> um, we, we, we tend to isolate that way we're talking to each other, but we don't have the urge to go live because we're Hi, like, Stephanie. it will take away from the, you know, episode we're trying to put together or whatever. And it's just, we're, we're it's a work in progress. We're learning balance. The analyst says she's so plastic. You can use her like a credit card and charge her. Oh my. <laughs> oh my. Hey, team psych ward. I'm kind of salivating over those breakfast burritos I have in the oven. That oh. sounds good. Sounds better than the cleaning fumes you had going on this morning. Yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> uh.
Molson Man, welcome. Molson we Man, we're roast. gonna do. Th- I think we're gonna do yes. um, part two of <laughs> No Sweat Andy, as Doctor B calls him, <laughs> or as I refer to him, Hansy Andy. Uh, Friday, <laughs> I think we're gonna get we're gonna get back to doing roasts on a regular basis because yes. it's needed for at, for us. It's good to laugh. Very Sometimes much you just so. gotta laugh. And we already have a pretty lengthy list of contestants. Mm-hmm. So we've we we've been getting requests too. So as a matter of fact, I'm gonna put our email to scroll at the bottom all fancy like that. Oh, look how fancy <laughs> Pinky's up. Where's my teapot? It's uh it's you know in <laughs> England. <laughs> oh. I don't know. I can't. Those are not my traveling clues. I didn't Hi, travel. A, that's my traveling attire, not my party clothes. Obviously, I couldn't have been there. Yes. Um, obviously, it wasn't me. Correct. So I just want to say hi to Unjustified is in the house. Unjustified. Um, hey, hey, hey. Hey, girl. Welcome, hi. welcome. So good to see you. Stephanie, welcome, love. So good to see you. Tomorrow, Friday, in or in three more weeks. <laughs> okay, block her. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> uh, tomorrow, Friday, rude. <laughs> Mama bear. Oh, crap. Wrong comment. Hi, Beth. Oh, gosh. So good to see you. Has been a while. Uh, okay, Rhonda says Britney's dad has enslaved her for over 13 years. Wasn't slavery abolished in 18? 18- actually, let me uh, demystify something about slavery. It actually has never been abolished in the United States. Did you know that? Yeah, because if you really read the fine print on the 13th <laughs> Amendment, you'll see. <laughs> exactly. So the slavery has not been abolished. Slavery and forced labor can be used if if used as punishment correct so, if you're in, if you're if you're a prisoner that's then... why prisoners that's why prisoners are considered a vulnerable population and well not just because of that but yeah so that's that's a fact that not many americans know just shocking to me. I watched that documentary, The 13th Amendment, and it's eye-opening. Everybody should check it out. It's it's on I it was on Netflix. I don't know if it's on Netflix anymore because I watched it. It's been a yeah. long time. Or I would recommend also reading The New Jim Crow. Uh mm-hmm. Alex Alexand oh, I forgot her name. I have to look it up. But yeah. So yes, that is uh that is the truth. Um all right, let's, hi, Made by Tiffany B. All right, let's, should we begin? Let's play. I will be honest with you. Oh, sorry. Let's play the clip of uh, Brittany's statement. Yes, let's. All righty. I will be honest with you. I haven't been back to court in a long time because I don't think I was heard on any level when I came to court the last time. I brought four sheets of paper in my hands and wrote in length what I had been through the last four months before I came there. The people who did that to me should not be able to walk away so easily. I'll recap. I was on tour in 2018. I was forced to do. My management said, if I don't do this tour, I will have to find an attorney. Ms. Ms. Spears, Ms. Spears, I I hate to interrupt you, but my court reporter is taking down what you're saying. Okay. So you have to speak a little more slowly. Oh, oh, of course. Yes. Okay. I apologize. Great. Okay. Um, The people who did this to me should not get away and be able to walk away so easily. Recap, I was on tour in 2018. I was forced to do. My management said, if I don't do this tour, I will have to find an attorney and by contract, my own management could sue me if I didn't follow through with the tour. He handed me a sheet of paper as I got off the stage in Vegas and said I had to sign it. It was very threatening and scary and with the conservatorship, I couldn't even get my own attorney. So out of fear, I went ahead and I did the tour. When I came off that tour, a new show in Las Vegas was supposed to take place. I started rehearsing early, but it was hard because I'd been doing Vegas for four years and I needed a break in between. 
But no, I was told this is the timeline and this is how it's going to go. I rehearsed four to four days a week. Um, half of the time in the studio and a half of the other time in a Westlake studio. I was basically directing most of the show with my whereabouts where I preferred to rehearse and actually did most of the choreography, meaning I taught my dancers my new choreography myself. I take everything I do very seriously. There's tons of video with me at rehearsals. I wasn't good. I was great. I led a room of 16 new dancers in rehearsals. It's funny to hear my manager's side of the story. They all said I wasn't participating in rehearsals and I never agreed to take my medication, which my medication is only taken in the mornings, never at rehearsal. They don't even see me. So why are they even claiming that? When I said no to one dance move into rehearsals, um, it was as if I planted a huge bomb um, somewhere. And I, I said, no, I don't want to do it this way. After that, my management and my dancers and my assistant of the new people that were supposed to do the new show all went into a room, shut the door, and didn't come out for at least 45 minutes. Ma'am, I'm not here to be anyone's slave. I can say no to a dance move. I was told by my, at the time, therapist, Dr. Benson, who died, that my manager called him in that moment and told him I wasn't cooperating or following the guidelines in rehearsals. And he also said I wasn't taking my medication, which is so dumb because I've had the same lady every morning for the past eight years give me my same medication, and I'm nowhere near these stupid people. It made no sense at all. There was a week period where they, they were nice to me, and they said, I don't want to do, and I told them I don't want to do the, um, they, wait, no. they, were, they were nice to me. They said, if I don't want to do the New Vegas show, I don't have to because I was getting really nervous. I said, I can wait. It was like they told me I could wait. It was like lifting literally 200 pounds off of me when they said I don't have to do in the show anymore because it was I was really, really hard on myself and it was too much. Um, I couldn't take it anymore. So I remember telling my assistant, but you know what? I feel weird if I say no. I feel like they're going to come back and be mean to me or punish me or something. Three days later, after I said no to Vegas, my therapist sat me down in a room and said he had a million phone calls about how. Oh, by the way, the notification sounds and the background noise is not me. It's part of the video. Sorry. I was not cooperating in rehearsals and I haven't been taking my medication. All of this was a false. He uh, he immediately the next day put me on lithium out of nowhere. He took me off my normal meds I'd been on for five years. And lithium is a very, very strong um, and completely different medication compared to what I was used to. You can go mentally impaired if you take too much, if you stay on it longer than five months. But he put me on that and I felt drunk. I really couldn't even take up for myself. I couldn't even have a conversation with my mom or dad really about anything. I told them I was scared and I, my doctor had me on six different nurses with this new medication come to my home, stay with me to monitor me on this new medication, which I never wanted to be on to begin with. There were six different nurse, nurses in my homes and they wouldn't let me get in my car to go anywhere for, for a month. Not only did my family not do a goddamn thing, my dad was all for it. Anything that happened to me had to be approved by my dad. And my dad only, he acted like he didn't know. That I was told I had to be tested over the Christmas holidays before they sent me away when my kids went to home to Louisiana. He was the one who approved all of it. My whole family did nothing. Over the two-week holiday, a lady came into my home for four hours a day, sat me down, and did a psych test on me. It took forever. But I was, I was told I had to then... After that, I got off. Oh, um, wait, I was told I had to then after I got a, a phone call from my dad saying after I did the psych test with this lady, basically saying I had failed the test or whatever, uh, whatever. Um, I'm sorry, Brittany, you have to listen to your doctors. They are planning to send you to a small home in Beverly Hills to do a small rehab program that we're going to make up for you. You're going to pay sixty thousand dollars a month for this. I cried on the phone for an hour and he loved every minute of it. The control he had over someone as powerful as me, as he loved the control to hurt his own daughter 100,000%, he loved it. I packed my bags and went to that place. I worked seven days a week, no days off, which in California, the only similar thing to this is called sex trafficking, making anyone work, work against their will, taking all their possessions away, credit card, cash, phone, passport card, and placing them in a home where they... They work with the people who live with them. They all, they all lived in the house with me, the nurses, the 24-7 security. Um, there, there was one chef that came there and cooked for me um, daily. I just have to kind of pause this a little bit because she's really sounding anxious and it's kind of like difficult to listen to for me. She's, she's 
I feel like, bless her little heart, she's wanted to say this for so long and get it off of her chest. And she feels like she's rushing through it because it, she thinks it's like any minute they're going to stop her from speaking. Mm-hmm. And the, uh, the sad thing about all of this is that it's her money. She paid mm-hmm. these people on her dad's, you know, her, on her dad's say so on her dime to be a prisoner. And, a slave. and it may, you know, it, it really, it really is difficult for me to listen to as a mental health professional and to hear how, how, um, how, you know, how, how there's so many doctors, especially in, in the celebrity world and the, and the Hollywood world who, I don't, I don't know. Like, how do you, how do you go along with this? I, I just, I don't understand. It's yeah, I don't. I don't either. I don't understand how a a doctor, especially just because they're mandated reporters, number one, but even before being a mandated reporter, they take an oath to first do no harm. And it's part of their Hippocratic oath. And look what, and clearly she's harmed. I mean, I just, I can't understand well, it that's, either. That's, that's the problem with, you know, with mental illness in the United States, unfortunately. You know, even for someone as powerful as Britney Spears, uh, who is paying, like, these people are all on her payroll, yet mm-hmm. they say that she is incompetent to make any choices or decisions for herself regarding her health or her mental health. Um, and, one basic right is that you have the right to refuse treatment. You have you the do. right to refuse medications that you feel like don't, um, you know, aren't um, the correct treatment for you. So the fact that like they even stripped her of that basic human right to <laughs> decide for herself I, it's it's like mind boggling that, and the more she resisted, they just drugged her more. Like lithium is not a, is no joke. I Absolutely mean, it is not. a it is a serious medication, and mm-hmm. um, right. And Molson Man says she obviously suffered a mental illness episode way back in the day, and they pounced on it, savages. Yes, she wa- was vulnerable. She mm-hmm. did have an episode and it seems like, you know, there was a lot going on in her life around the time. I don't know much about it, but I know that that um, she was going through her or some relationship troubles. I mean, it wasn't unprovoked. It wasn't just, um, you know, out of the blue, like a psychosis episode right. of psychosis or whatever. Um, it, it just seemed situationally triggered and it was, um, yeah, it was absolutely used to just completely take away her. Um, help me, Jen. Agency. Her, her agency. agency. Yeah, her free agent. She just has mm-hmm. no. And there, but there, but all the money is coming from her. Now, granted, she may not be the person that's actually signing the checks because obviously her father has taken over that, but it's. There would be no money if Britney wasn't doing these shows in Vegas. So mm-hmm. you see, it all goes hand in hand. It's a vicious cycle. And um, I remember when I went to Vegas in 2018 or yeah, 2018, and I was going to try to get tickets and I was so bummed that she wasn't working the weekend that I was going to be there. And I got salty about it. But then now I'm hearing, like, I was like, how could she, how dare she not be working? But now (laughs) I'm hearing her side of things. And I'm like, now I've, I mean, and I only said like it it, as a flip remark, I wasn't serious about it. But now just even making that flip remark, I feel bad. Like I, you know, I feel like, oh, Jen, what's wrong with you? Why are you so judgy? Yes. Well, for, for those of you who are in here and who are also following our Kurt Cobain coverage, uh, this is important because simul- as you listen to Britney 
for me anyway. So this is my first time hearing it. So I'm going to be reacting as we go. But as I listened to the first part of her statement where she was talking about how they made her do this tour and made her sign things and whatnot, you know, it really, really parallels what my understanding is of what Kurt Cobain was going through in the last few months of his life. And that is, you have a gang of these executives who all want a piece of the pie. Yeah. And you have, you know, you have Courtney uh, uh, at the at the front of it leading the gang, and I believe that they put an enormous amount of pressure on Kurt Cobain. And Brittany even said, oh, we're going to send you to a rehab for a couple of days. It's 60000 a month, you know, that you need for sure. So these decisions are being made for her. Um, and I think that was what was happening with Kurt Cobain as well. And he resisted and he resisted until, you know. Mm -hmm. It became a problem. So let's let's continue. Let okay. me know. Yeah, let me know if, if we need to pause again. During All the right. weekdays. They watched me changed every day naked, morning, noon, and night. Um my body, I had no privacy door for my um for my room. I gave eight gals of blood a week. If I didn't do any of my meetings and work from ten, um, eight to six at night, which is 10 hours a day, seven days a week, no days off, I wouldn't be able to see my kids or my boyfriend. I never had a say in my schedule. They always told me I had to do this. And ma'am, I will tell you, sitting in a chair 10 hours a day, seven days a week, it ain't fun. And especially when you can't walk out the front door. And that's why I'm telling you this again two years later. After I've lied and told the whole world I'm okay and I'm happy, it's a lie. I thought I just maybe I said that enough. Maybe I might become happy because I've been in denial. I've been in shock. I am traumatized. You know, fake it till you make it. But now I'm telling you the truth, okay? I'm not happy. I can't sleep. I'm so angry, it's insane, and I'm depressed. I cry every day, and the reason I'm telling you this is because I don't think how the state of California can have all this written in the court documents from the time I showed up and do absolutely nothing, just hire with my money another person to keep and keep my dad on board. Wow. Ma'am, my dad mm -hmm. and anyone involved in this conservatorship and my management who played a huge role in punishing at me when I said, no, ma'am, they should be in jail. Their cool tactics working for Miley Cyrus as she smokes on joints and stage at the VMAs. Nothing is ever done to this generation for doing wrong things. But my precious body, who's worked for my dad for the past fucking 13 years, trying to be so good and pretty, so perfect when he works me so hard. When I do everything I'm told in the state of California, allowed my father, ignorant father to take his own daughter, who only has a role with me if I work with him. They set back the whole course and allowed him to do that to me. That's given these people I've worked for way too much control. They also threatened me and said, if I don't go, then I have to go to court. And it will be more embarrassing me if the judge publicly makes go the, the evidence we have. You have to go. I was advised for my image. I need to go ahead and just go. Okay, so just also keep in mind these advisements too, but th because that's that's kind of like the status quo in Hollywood is these uh, entertainment lawyers that also, you know, come into play with the uh, uh, Isaiah Silva case because these entertainment lawyers already know the name of the game. So you're just advised to basically, you know, get away with the least amount of damage. And I mm -hmm. think, you know, I, I think it's preposterous, preposterous. It's unbelievable. Get this it is, over with. This, they said that to me. I, oh, sorry. Sorry. That's Jen. All right. This isn't an isolated incident. I mean, you look no. at, look at, look at Prince, rest his soul. Look, look what happened to him. I mean, he worked endlessly and tirelessly and was yes, man, yes, sir, to death. And that's what happened to him. Instead of, you know, his doctor saying, look, you, you cannot perform every single night for 20 years in no less than six inch heels and expect it not to take a toll on your body. Instead, instead of advising him to make changes and adjustments, all they did was throw pills at him. 
Same thing with Michael Jackson. Because he was so upside down due to the um, settlements and then the trial and all of that. And I'm not going to get into guilt or innocence because that's not even the point. It's just the, the fact of what happened. By the time he was supposed to do his um, tour in Japan, he was in zero condition physically or mentally to do it. And instead of calling it off, they said, no, 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 let's do all these crazy. I mean, to put him essentially what would amount to being under anesthesia every single night for him to sleep. And nobody thought there was an issue like that could just go on for forever and ever for him to perform, you know, when he woke up is ridiculous. And there, these people in, in Hollywood who are pushing this through and allowing this to happen, they have to be stopped. At the end of the day, these people are just that. They're people. And exactly. they're being exploited for money. Exactly. And it's disgusting. That's true. And I feel, you know, I feel bad for Brittany because, oh, see, it's, it's, it's so lonely. Like her voice is trembling, but it must be, it must be so lonely to live in that world. I mean, you have all these people around you, but you, you can't turn anywhere. This is happening in the most public way possible. So it's, it's just, it's eye-opening. And I think that it's great that there are regular people, everyday people like us who are saying, hey, this is wrong. And I think it's good when S Hollywood stands up for one of their own, but not you, Courtney. You sit down. We don't need your help. <laughs> wait no, till thank you. you. <laughs> wait, till you see, wait, wait till you see her uh, social media posts. Okay. I, can't, I can't wait to show you, to hear what you have to say about that. I don't even drink alcohol. I, sh I should drink alcohol, considering what they put my heart through. Also, the Bridges facility they sent me to, none of the kids, the, 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 I, went, I was doing this program for four months. So the last um, two months, I went to a Bridges facility. None of the kids there did the, the, did the program. They never showed up for any of them. Um, you didn't have to do anything if you didn't want to. How come they always made me go? How come I was always threatened by my dad and anybody that participated in this conservatorship? If I don't do this, what they tell me to enslave me to do, they're going to punish me. The last time I spoke to you by just keeping the conservatorship going and also keeping my dad in the loop made me feel like I was dead. Like I didn't matter. Like nothing had been done to, to me. Like you thought I was lying or something. I'm telling you again because I'm not lying. I want to feel heard. And I'm telling you this again so maybe you can understand the depth and the degree and the damage that they did to me back then. I want changes and I want changes going forward. I deserve changes. I was told I have to sit down and be evaluated again if I want to end the conservatorship. Ma'am, I didn't know I could petition the conservatorship to end it. I'm sorry for my ignorance, but I honestly didn't know that. But honestly, but I don't think I owe anyone to be evaluated. I've done more than enough. I don't feel like I should even be in room with anyone to offend me by trying to question my capacity of intelligence, whether I need to be in this stupid conservatorship or not. I've done more than enough. I don't owe these people anything, especially me, the one that has roofed and fed tons of people on tour on the road. It's embarrassing and demoralizing what I've been through. And that's the main reason. I've never said it openly. And mainly I didn't want to say it openly because I honestly don't think anyone would believe me. To be honest with you, the Paris Hilton story on what they did to her to that, that school, I didn't believe any of it. Of it. I'm sorry. I'm an outsider and I'll just be honest. I didn't believe it. And maybe I'm wrong. And that's why I didn't want to say any of this to anybody, to the public, because <clears throat> I thought people would make fun of me or laugh at me and say, she's lying. She's got everything. She's Britney Spears. I'm not lying. I just want my life back. And it's been 13 years and it's enough. It's been a long time since I've owned my money and it's my wish and my dream for all of this to end without being tested. Again, it makes no sense whatsoever for the state of California to sit back and literally watch me with their own two eyes make a living for so many people and pay so many people trucks and buses on tour on the road with me and be told I'm not good enough.
but I'm great at what I do. And I allow these people to control what I do, ma'am. And it's enough. It makes no sense at all. Now, going forward, I'm not willing to meet or see anyone I've met with enough people against my will. I'm done. All I want is to own my money for this to end and my boyfriend um, to drive me in his fucking car. And I would honestly like to sue my family, to be totally honest with you. Um, I also would like to be able to short share my story with the world and um, what they did to me instead of it being a hush hush secret to benefit all of them. I want to be able to be heard on what they did to me by making me keep this in for so long is not good for my heart. I've been so angry and I cry every day. It concerns me. I'm told I'm not allowed to expose the people who did this to me. For my sanity, I need you to the judge to approve me, do, it, be, it, do an interview where I can be heard on what they did to me. And actually, I have the right to use my voice and take up for myself. My attorney says I can't, um, it's not good. I can't let the public know anything they did to me. And by not saying anything is saying it's okay. I, I don't know what I said here. It's not okay. I would rush. Actually, I don't want to interview. I'd much rather just have an open call to you for the press to hear, which I didn't know today we're doing. So thank you. Instead of having an interview, honestly, I need that to get it off my heart, the anger and all of it that, that um, that's, that's been happening. It's not fair they're telling me lies about me openly. Even my family, they do interviews to anyone they want on news stations, my own family doing interviews and talking about the situation and making me feel so stupid. And I can't say one thing. And my own people say I can't say, say anything. It's been two years. I want a recorded call to you. Actually, we're doing this now, which I didn't know that we were doing this. Um, to the public, I say knows what they did to me. I told my, um, I know my lawyer, Sam, has been very scared for me to go forward because he's saying if I speak up, I'm being over, overworked in that facility of that rehab place. The, the rehab place will sue me. He told me I should keep it to myself, really. I would personally like to... Actually, I know I've, I've had grown with a personal relationship with Sam, my lawyer. I've been talking to him like three times um, a week now. We've kind of built a relationship, but I haven't really had the opportunity by my own self to actually handpick the, my own lawyer by myself. Um, and I would like to be able to do that. Um, I would like to um, also... Um, the main reason why I'm here is because I want to end the conservatorship without having to be evaluated. I've done a lot of research, ma'am, and there's a lot of judges who do end conservatorships for people without them having to be evaluated all the time. The only times they don't is if a concerned family member says something's wrong with this person and consider um, and other otherwise. And considering my family has lived off my conservatorship for 13 years, I won't be surprised if one of them has has something to say and go forward and say, we don't think this should end. We have to help her, especially if I get my fair served and turning exposing what they did to me. Also, I want to speak to you about at the moment, my obligations, which I personally don't think at the very moment I owe anybody anything. I have three meetings a week I have to attend no matter what. I just don't like feeling like I work for the people whom I pay. I don't like being told I have to no matter what, even if I'm sick. Jody, the conservator, says I, um, I have to see my coach Ken even when I'm sick. I would like to do one meeting a week with a therapist. I've never in before, even before they sent me to that place, had two therapy sessions. Um, a therapy one a therapy session and one therapy session with um, my I have a doctor and then a therapy person. Um, what I've been forced to do illegal in my life, I shouldn't be told I have to be available three times a week to these people I don't know. I'm talking to you today because I feel again, yes, even Jody is starting to kind of take it too far with me. They have me going to therapy twice a week and a psychiatrist. I've never in the past had wait, they have me going yeah twice a week and my doctor gold, so that's three. I've never in the past had to see a therapist more than once a week. It takes too much out of me going to this man I don't know. Number one, I'm scared of people. I don't trust people with what I've been through. Okay, huge. I have to stop. <laughs> huge red flag. <laughs> oh, so right? she can't. She can't choose her own like doctors. No. And mm -hmm. the thing is, is that she can't even be open with her doctors because her doctors report to the report, conservatorship. Right? So mm -hmm. she can't even tell them what is going on for real. It's like she can't be honest and say, you know, I feel um, I started taking this medication and it makes me feel this way or I'm I'm struggling. She can't even be honest with the people that are supposed to are supposed to be helping her. The people, by the way, that she's paying to help her. That's what's so sad about this is like she has no 
agency. She is stuck. And I feel awful for her. I, mm-hmm. I'm not saying that they should just listen. I, I don't know her whole situation. I'm not her doctor, but now I'm, I don't trust the things that her doctors are saying either, because look what's happened, you know, and maybe she does need to continue to go to therapy, but shouldn't that be her choice? Well, she's not trying to say she doesn't want it. Yeah. She's, she's saying she's being forced to go three times a week. So, um, what did she? I'm trying to look at the transcript. She said, "Cause she she um, said it so fast. It feels like what she's saying is, what okay, I'm so being said, expected never, to do is over and beyond what any other reasonable, what could be reasonably expected of a human being." Yeah. I have well every I mean, time there's going, every time I jump through one hoop, there's 27 other hoops for me to jump through and sometimes they light them on fire just to see poor thing. Yeah. Well, so she's now in a rehab where she's seeing a uh, a psychiatrist and going to therapy twice a week. I mean, that's not unheard of going to therapy like more than once a week. And seeing a psychiatrist, um, but that's typically, you know, not forced. Yeah, but, that's the thing. It's it be. Di- yeah. It's I think it's I think what she has is saying here. Bless her heart. Is that it's not that I don't want to do these things. It's not that I'm not saying that I don't need some some level of help. But I'd like to be able to pick the people that help me. I'd like to be able to have confidence in the people that I'm confiding in that they're not going, it's not going to be then used against me in court as, as evidence that I can't manage my own life still. And I need to be every single move need, of mine needs to be controlled from now until the end of time. I think that's really what she's trying to say, but just, it sounds so bless her heart. It sounds so rushed because I feel like they, she feels like she's going to be stopped. She's got to get it all out before they stop her. Yeah. Well, but also, you know, like rapid speech is also a symptom of mania too. So, mm-hmm. but I'm, you know, I'm just saying that out there, throwing that and, out there. And it but, happens um, too don't, when you're we don't anxious. Know our baseline. Yeah, we and don't it happens know our too when you're anxious. You start, you know, talking faster when you're anxious because, you know, but if, I feel bad for. Her. I don't know that it's anxiety as much as it's anger. She that is too. clearly mm-hmm. upset and. There's, you know, there's, it's a, it's a special kind of, of, um, anger when, when you have your rights taken away from you. Mm -hmm. Now I will say this. I I've heard lots of interviews with Brittany over the years. I've never heard her sound this way ever. She does. It's a plea. She's pleading with court Mm -hmm. as the same time as being angry. You know, like, why the heck are you not listening to me? Mm -hmm. When are you going to listen to me? When is it going to be enough? How many more hoops, you know, bless her heart. What is going on in California? What is up with these judges? What is happening in that court system? And the clever setup of being in Westlake, one of the most exposed places in Westlake, which today, yesterday, paparazzi showed me right coming back. out of the place, literally crying um, in therapy. It's embarrassing and it's demoralizing. I deserve privacy when I go. I deserve privacy when I go and have therapy either at my home, like I've done for eight years. They've always come to my home or um, when the Dr. Benson, the guy, the man that died, um, I went to a place similar to what I went to in Westlake, which was very exposed and really bad. Um, okay, so wait, where was I? In Westlake, it's, I, it was identical to Dr. Benjamin, who died, the one who illegally, yes, 100% abused me by the treatment he gave me to. And to be totally honest with you, I was so... Excuse me for interrupting you, but my reporter says if you could just slow down a little bit, because she's trying to make sure she gets everything that you're saying. Okay, cool. And so if you could, so okay. that would be great. Um, I have been through, and the clever setup in Westlake is identical to Dr. Benson, who died, the one who illegally, yes, 100% abused me by the treatment he gave me. And to be totally honest with you, when he passed away, I got on my knees and thank God. In other words, mm-hmm. my team is pushing, with, pushing it with me again. I have trapped phobias being in small rooms because the trauma locking me up in, for four months in that place is not okay for them to send me, sorry, I'm going fast, to that small room like that. 
twice a week with another new therapist I pay that I never even approved. I don't like it. I don't want to do that. And I haven't done anything wrong to deserve this treatment. It's not okay to force me to do anything I don't want to do. By law, at by law, Jody and this so-called team should honestly, I should be able to sue them for threatening me and saying, if I don't go and do these meetings twice a week, we, can, we can't let you have your money and go to Maui on your vacations. You have to do what you're told for this program and then you will be able to go. But it was very clever. They picked one of the most exposed places in Westlake, knowing I have the hot topic of the conservatorship that paparazzis are going to show up and get me crying coming out of that place. I begged them to make sure that they did this at my home so I would have privacy. I deserve privacy. The whole conservatorship from the beginning, once um, the conservatorship, oh, the conservative conservatorship from the beginning, once you see someone, whoever it is in the conservatorship, making money, making them money and myself money and working that whole that whole statement right there, the conservatorship should end. There should be no I shouldn't be in a conservatorship if I can work and provide money and work for myself and pay other people. It makes no sense. The laws need to change. What state allows people to own another person's money and account and threaten them and saying you can't spend your money unless you do what we want you to do? And I'm paying them. Ma'am, I've worked since I was 17 years old. You have to understand how thin that is for me. Every morning I get up to know I can't go on somewhere unless I meet people I don't know every week in an office identical to the one where the therapist was very abusive to me. I truly believe this conservatorship is abusive. And now we can sit here all day and say, oh, conservatorships are here to help people. But ma'am, there's a thousand conservatorships that are abusive as well. I don't feel like I can have live a full life. I don't owe... Th I don't owe them to go see a man I don't know and share him my problems. I don't even believe in therapy. I always think you take it to God. I want to end the conservatorship without it being evaluated. In the meantime, I want this therapist um, once a week. He can either come to my home. Um, no, I just want him to come to my home. I'm not willing to go to Westlake and be embarrassed by all these paparazzi the scummy paparazzi laughing at my faces while I'm crying, coming out and taking my pictures as all these um, white, nice dinners where people are drinking wine at restaurants, watching me leave these places. They set me up by sending me to the most exposed places, places and I told them I didn't want to go there because I knew um, paparazzi would show up there. Um, uh, they only gave me two options for therapists, and I'm not sure how you make your decisions, ma'am, but this is the only chance for me to talk to you for a while. I need your your help. So if you can just kind of let me know where your head is, I, I don't really honestly know what to say. But my requests are just to end the conservatorship without being evaluated. I, I want to petition basically to end the conservatorship, but I want to I want it to be petitioned to end it. But I don't want to be evaluated and be sat in a room with people four hours a day like they did me before. And they made it even worse for me after that happened. So. I just I, I, I'm honestly new at this and I'm doing research on all these things. I do know common sense and the method that things can end it for people. It has ended without them being evaluated. So I just want you to take that in considerate consideration. I've also done research. Um, um, wait, also took a year during COVID to get me any self-care methods during COVID. She said there were no services available. She's lying, ma'am. Ma my mom went to the spa twice in Louisiana during COVID. For a year, I didn't have my nails done, no hairstyling and no massages, no acupuncture, nothing for a year. I saw the maids in my home each week with their nails done different each time. She made me feel like my dad does. Very similar, her behavior and my dad, but just a different dynamic. Team wants me to work and stay home instead of having longer vacations. They're, they you, they are used to me sort of doing a weekly routine for them, and I'm over it. I don't feel like I owe them anything at this point. They need to be reminded they actually work for me. They tricked me by sending me to the most. Oh, okay, I repeated myself there. Um. Okay. Uh, um. Also, I was supposed to be able to um, have a friend that I used to do AA meetings with. I did AA for two years. I have like, you know, um, I did three meetings a week. You know, I met a bunch of um, women there and I'm not able to see my friends that li live eight minutes away from me, which I find extremely strange. Um, I, I feel like they're making me feel like I live in a rehab program. This is my home. 
Um, I'd like for my boyfriend to be able to drive me in his car. Um, and I want to meet with a therapist once a week, not twice a week. And I want him to come to my home because I actually know I do need a little therapy. <laughs> um, I was told, um, um, hold on. I think that's, oh, and I would like to progressively move forward and I want to have the real deal. I want to be able to get married and have a baby. I was told right now in the conservatorship, I'm not able to get married or have a baby. I have a um, ID inside of myself right now so I don't get pregnant. I wanted to take the ID out so I could start trying to have another baby, but this so-called team won't let me go to the doctor to take it out because they are, they don't want me to have children, any more children. Um, so basically this conservatorship is doing me way more harm than good. Um, I want, I deserve to have a life. I've worked my whole life. I deserve to have a two to three year break and just, you know, do what I want to do. Um, but I do feel like, um, there is a crunch here and I feel like, um, I feel open and I'm okay to talk to you today about it, but I I wish I could stay with you on the phone forever because when I get off the phone with you, all of a sudden, all of I hear, I hear all these no's, no, no, no. And then all of a sudden I get, I feel ganged up on and I feel bullied and I feel left out and alone. And I'm tired of feeling alone. I deserve to have the same rights as anybody does by having a child, a family, any of those things. And more so, um, and that's all I wanted to say to you. And thank you so much for letting me speak to you today. Wow. That's a lot. I don't even know what to say. I don't even have words. She just sounds so sad and urgent like she just is begging for help and it's really hard to listen to it's really hard I don't know what you have up on the screen Dr. B because you're also muted oh I see see I didn't know I everybody <laughs> everybody's favorite let's 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 hear what old uh, Courtney love Let's hear some pearls of wisdom for her from her. I'm sure she has a ton. I'm sure she's the fortune cookie of the Instagrams today. Well, let's hear it, Courtney. <laughs> yeah. So she posted this and it's uh, it's an Instagram story, I believe. I'm not on in, like I'm I'm not a big social media, but I think this is Instagram, right? Uh and close it, make it a little yeah, that, that looks like Instagram. Right? Yeah. So she's sharing a screenshot of a text message um, from someone. It says, hey, Court, Jesus, man, I don't know what to say. You told me, and I'm so sorry. I never knew. I guess I didn't believe you. I'm sorry. And I'm disgusted and depressed just listening to Britney speak. We definitely will be going after TriStar big time. I owe you, sis. And she says, she, Courtney Love responds, uh, thank you. Or follow the money. Thank you. And then the next one is, Courtney, I'm in tears. I'm so fucking sorry you went through this. What? Is there something in the news? No, just hearing Britney speak about everything she's gone through and you dealt with all the same players. It's just heartbreaking. So that's uh, one post. And uh, another one she put up there was... Uh, oh my, someone told her, oh my God, this is disgusting. We're so sorry. We believe you now. So here's her rant. 24 minutes in 13 years. Was it the IUD, which I mentioned and forced birth control, the lockdown in Holmby Hills, Dr. Benson, lithium, Judge Penny shutting off audio for live tweeting after 23 minutes. LOL. Judge Reba didn't hand her job. To, to just any judge, do me a favor. 
Don't apologize. Follow the money. 24 minutes in 13 years. Rolling her eyes, vomiting, praying, broken heart. Samantha Stark and Brittany stands and only what? Them are the heroines here. No one else had heard us ever. Now you're all sorry. Go fix it. Bye. So clearly oh, we have Courtney. <laughs> we have a, a miscommunication problem here. <laughs> mm, clearly. Clearly. But she does Do you, leave us with a really good pearl of wisdom. Follow, the, follow money. the money. And mm. we shall, Courtney. Yes, we shall. Mm, we have been. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we will continue. <clears throat> yeah. So now she's saying, you know, this whole boohoo me too, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So what, can you just break it down for us, Jen? What is the difference between uh, the people who are around court, uh, Britney Spears' life versus the same quote-unquote players that were in Courtney's life? What is the difference there? Well, uh, in Courtney Love's case, she hired these players, if you will, to use her words, of her own free will. Where, where Britney Spears has had these players foisted onto her with no choice. She had no say. Mm -hmm. She had mm -hmm. no, uh, she, she, she wasn't a part of the decision making. Mm -hmm. Where Miss Love would be, she, Miss Love is trying to liken herself to Courtney or to, uh, to Britney in that she's a, a puppet. Okay, but the truth of the matter is Courtney Love is actually the one pulling the strings. It's very different. That's just what mm -hmm. I see. Absolutely. 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 So, yes, Courtney, you don't get to... Well, I think what she's referencing to, she had like she had a episode of what I describe as paranoia or whatever i think it was maybe a mixture of paranoia and guilty conscience and drug induced life mm -hmm. you know um where she was running around claiming that uh 40 million dollars were embezzled from her and from from kurt cobain's trust and everything and again keyword being running around when, when has Brittany been able to run around? And I know that people are going to sort of feel mm. some type of way about Brittany saying, you know, I didn't get my acupuncture. I didn't get my nails done. I didn't get my massages. Okay. It's all relative. What's wrong with that? Well, What's because it does that? sort like, of sound, I can, I, I can hear people and it sort of sounds like, oh, poor little rich girl. But that's their, that's, that's the wrong things to be focused on. Well, it, do, she do has play, money. And she should be, if that's what she wants to spend her money on, then she should be able to spend her money on that. It's all yes. relative. It's no different than, I'll give you a perfect example. Brittany has her massages, her nails, and her acupuncture. Jen has her coffee and her five hours. Okay. I would feel if somebody restricted me and told me that I was not allowed to have my coffee and my five an hour energy, it is no different than somebody telling Britney Spears, she's not allowed to have acupuncture massages and her nails did. It's all relative. Her line in the sand is different than mine, but it's really the same line, just about different things. Yeah. I want to share, um, I want to go back to Sam Lutfi because he's part of this whole thing as well. And I'm going to pull up the site. Hold on that, a second, Dr. B. Jen uh -huh. Madsen, I'm not saying that poor people don't get massages and get their nails done. It's just that the way that she said it, I can see how... I always like to look at the other side of the coin and I can, I can see how people would be like, oh, that's really what you're complaining about. But it, like I said, it's all relative. Everybody's creature comforts are different. And for any, for somebody to come in and take those away from a human being is wrong, period. I don't care what her creature comforts are, as long as they're not illegal. I mean, you know, that's all I was trying to say. Yeah. So I've pulled up a link that uh, 
um, Tom Grant shared with me back a couple of months ago when we talked about the um, Silva case. And this is a link that he shared with me. I don't know if the if this is public back on his website or not, but he has given me permission to share this. So um, this is from the case that we already talked about where, you know, Courtney's being sued for kidnapping and attempted murder. Well, this is from Sam Lutfi. These are the recordings of Sam Lutfi. And uh, Tom Grant says, we have been furnished with legally recorded audio conversations between Courtney Love's good friend, Sam Lutfi, and former girlfriend of Francis Bean's uh, estranged hus husband, Isaiah. Now, Isaiah's former girlfriend, Jessica Sullivan, is also the mother of Isaiah's seven-year-old child. To this day, Jessica and Isaiah remain very close friends. After Isaiah had informed Jessica about his kidnapping by Sam Lutfi, these conversations were recorded by Jessica in compliance with the California Penal Code section Blah, blah, blah. Soon after she made these recorded conversations, Jessica and her girlfriend, Tila, went to the Hollywood substation of the Los Angeles Police Department, where they attempted to turn over the recordings to the police. Quote, this involves a high profile case with harassment and threats and a kidnapping, Jessica told the officer at the front desk. Quote, well, there are a lot of people ahead of you, the officer responded coldly. You'll have to wait about eight hours. But this is important, Jessica replied. It involves threats. Then you should probably come back in the morning, the desk officer said. Well, hopefully I won't die tonight, Jessica said, as she now felt frightened and worried for her safety. Jessica later told us that she felt like the officer at the LAPD station had just blown us off. So what do you think? So what do you do? when the term to serve and protect has lost its original meaning. You protect yourself by making the public aware of crazed threats that have been made against you and your family. The first four audio samples posted below clearly illustrate the wannabe mobster side of Sam Lutfi's personality. Simply listen to the angry, menacing tone of his voice. And the last of the examples, number five, can only be described as chilling. Sam Lutfi seems to have Francis Bean Cobain exactly where he wants her. <clears throat> okay, so the entire recording is 45 minutes long. More of these recorded conversations may eventually be made public, but for now, this is what we have. So the first recorded, this is Sam Lutfi, who was Courtney Love's friend and whom she filed a restraining order against only after, only after, Isaiah Silva filed uh, a um, charge or a lawsuit against her and Lutfi and several others for kidnapping and attempted murder and so on and so forth. So this is Sam Lutfi. This is a guy who Courtney Love hired and who she is now turning around pretending to be a victim of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, so yeah, just. It's ridiculous. Enjoy. Are we what have I ever no, done? To oh, here we go. Can you hear it? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, no, no. We can hear. It. I just was. I wasn't prepared to hear it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's it's me. Don't say sorry. It's just I'm not on my game tonight. Yeah. No, I don't blame you. But I think, um, yeah, this is a loaded topic for real. It is. It is. And what I I also want to say that I I I I feel like that little snippet that I commented on is going to be used by her family and also the media. And it will be twisted because we don't have ethical. There are still some journalists who have ethics and they, 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 you know, re re mm -hmm. report responsibly, but most, but by and large, it's no longer ethical and it's about whatever makes the money and whatever brings in the headlines. And if you, if you think about it, if you're, wanting to keep her in control, what are you going to tell the media? Look at the list of things that she complains about. Is it really that bad? That's the game that these, that, that happens in the press. It's yeah. no different than let's take Courtney Love and Kurt Cobain. Look at the rumor that was repeated over and over and over, even though as fact, even though it wasn't true that he, you, when they, 
saw him laying there, nobody would have ever known that it was Kurt Cobain because his face was destroyed. And that was a flat lie. And it was repeated Mm -hmm. and repeated. And not only was it repeated on- I have to show you something. Okay. Not only was it repeated on MTV- Right. It then, then from mainstream, then mainstream media picked it up and they repeated it. And this is how it goes. And it's, we as consumers of the media have to start holding these people responsible to report accurately and ethically and stop trying to just go for the most, you know, sensationalized headline that they can. All right. I'm off my soapbox because my back hurts now. Yeah. I have to show, I have to show this image that, um, Quite frankly, I actually plan to use in something that I've been working on. Okay. Give, give me one moment. Okay. Do you need to, do you need to check your photos? I got to check my pictures. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a, it's been like a million years. I've got thousands of pictures I got to go through. Yes. So this was a painting. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 But, uh, I mean, this this isn't the one that I wanted to show, actually. This is the wrong one. Damn it. There was another one that clearly demonstrates Kurt Cobain's face being completely, like, blown off. And that painting was making its rounds um, in different museums and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, just another, just another, like, trick to make people believe that, you know, he was... He blew his brains away, mm-hmm. but then at the at the same token, like on, on the same, oh, at the same time, she's also then, you know, protecting the autopsy report like a snake protects its legs. You know, is that is that a Bosnian <laughs> saying? Because can you recognize it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Kriya, kriya, kosmia noge. Exactly. Because Cause, cause snakes don't have any legs. Exactly. Um, but, you know, she endorses things like that and way, way more oh, um, yeah. uh, intrusive privacy stuff than, uh, you know, what could possibly be revealed in mm-hmm. the autopsy report. So I All think right. that's just... But yeah, let me get back to Latvi because now I'm, I feel myself drifting. Okay. All right. Sorry, so. I always take you off into the weeds because I be getting on a soapbox and then I'm then I run out of steam because my back starts hurting and I got to climb down off that thing and you know I'm just just not as spry as I once was. Yeah. Well, same here, girl. Same here. <laughs> okay. Let me put us back on the show. So let's listen to sample okay. one. Okay. What have I ever you done to Francis? What have I ever you done to Francis? You, what have you ever done to Francis? Yeah. You're stabbing her in the back. You think you're fucking smart? Do you think that this is going to work for you? Do you have any idea what type of people you're dealing against? Are you stupid? Be with her friend right now. Sign with her. You want a future? She's got money to fucking take care of you and your wife and your child to the day you die. I don't want anyone to take care of me and my girlfriend and my daughter. So that's one. You die fucking bitch whore fuck. You are fucking in the streets. I don't scare you. Don't worry about me. My lawyers and the police are after you. So fuck you, you fucking dirty guy. And Tom Grant co- uh, comments, we have to wonder how Latvi's so-called, quote, feminist friend, Courtney Love, feels about her buddy screaming sexist, condescending, condescending gay profanities to the young mother of Courtney's once step-granddaughter. He's disgusting. He's mm-hmm. disgusting. Let's this is the going. kind of tapes you hear, like, mm, on the on. ID channel. From an abusive husband, you know, and then they show and and the the wife is dead and they, you know. Well, that's that's kind of where because, look, patterns are not for nothing. Correct. Uh, The only the the only cash cow that. Well, I don't want to say that, but this is 
with all respect to Francis Bean, one thing that I want people to to be 100% clear on that I am in no way, shape or fo- form trying to attack Francis Bean whatsoever. It's quite opposite. I am concerned for Francis Bean because some of the things that we are seeing unfold and, and that we're seeing happening before our eyes are the same things her father has been subjected to and has been to with these weird people and characters who don't mm-hmm. belong anywhere around. Are you normal? Correct. <laughs> like you have to wonder, okay, this person is obviously hired by her mother. And mm-hmm. if he is saying this uh, and it's intended to be on behalf of Francis Bean, how far is it to, to wonder were these things used on Francis Bean? This is who he is as a person. And if he's around her. Oh, no. You know what I mean? Him, but Courtney, if well, you correct. remember. Yeah. If you remember. Yeah, if you remember from the uh, from the complaint uh, from the court case that I read out, uh, so Sam Lutfi's role in this entire uh, Silva case is he was hired by Courtney, and she ref- look y'all are gonna make me pull out the text messages, and you know what? I think we should because this needs to be seen. But Courtney refers to him as her bulldog. And, you know, he kind of like takes care. He makes her problems go away is exactly what she says in in Courtney's words. And he was used to run drugs to Francis Bean through that actor boy, whatever his name is, Butler. Mm. So Sam Lutfi and Butler. Is that his official title? Actor boy. (laughs) Look, I don't even care. Anymore. Don't look at me. <laughs> I don't Aren't care. Aren't you a problem? If you have a problem, okay, it's fine. Listen, follow, follow me along. This is a complex okay. story. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So you got Courtney, who's hired Sam Lutfi to be her Rottweiler or pit bull or whatever dog that makes her problems go away. Okay, Sam Lutfi lives in Los Angeles, and his roommate. His roommate is the actor boy, uh, Butler. Mm. Okay. Okay. So Sam and Butler are, you know, BFFs. And Sam uh, gives Butler drugs to deliver to Francis Beans and Isaiah's house at that time. So... um, I'm confused. I'm getting like messages on the side. So mm-hmm. me too. <laughs> so stop um, distracting the talent who can't take it. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie says, uh, oh, she has to go. Good night, Stephanie. Thank you for being here. Okay, I'm confused. So yeah, so um basically that's Sam Lutfi and and um only after, only after, you know, the lawsuit was filed, that's when Courtney started taking her distance. But, you know, shortly before the lawsuit came along, you know, Lutfi, Lutfi's social media still to this day, he's got, you know, he's got her up on on his um, Instagrams and whatever's. So, but yeah, let's, let's, let's just get through this. Here's number three. Your kid will be in an orphanage. I'm going to put you away. I'm going to put your fucking little boyfriend away. Laugh all you want. I swear to God, you fucking dirty whore. You're going to be in the streets where you belong. I swear to God. Then just be smart. You want to I am smart. You want to... You know what I know? What I, hey, Sam. Sam. You, you want to know, you know who I'm siding with? The truth. Honesty. That's what I'm siding with. You want to know the truth? You want to know the truth? I already know I the truth. Your, you can't handle I the truth. I your ex's house 12 months ago. Good. That's how Francis got out. Okay? Cool. The truth is, everything that was bugged for the first nine months was not legal to use in court. Boom. 
And illegally bugging people's houses is something that... He's on tape. I mean, I know it's not tape. I'm old school. He is re- being recorded admitting to crimes. Yeah. Yeah. You need a you need a new you, you need a new uh what does she call him? Guard dog. Yeah, he filling up the cookie jar. That's right. That was their code word, by the way. The cookies were drugs mm. and cookie jar was the spot. The spot. Okay, and uh, Tom Grant's notes, he says, Sam Lutfi is foolishly admitting to the commission of a crime here, and he's bragging about it. It would have been illegal for Lutfi or anyone else to bug that house, even if one of the residents had given him permission to do it. And if both residents had given permission, which they didn't, they would also have to tell any visiting guests that their conversations were being recorded. And uh, the last sample... All Jesse wants is to sit down with Francis and, and so they can talk. They care about Francis, each other. Francis is too unstable to handle this. Exactly. Francis. Uh, did you hear that? Yes, Francis, Francis is too unstable to handle this. Are you a doctor? But, uh, okay. What do you okay. mean? All Jesse wants is to sit down with Francis and, and so they can talk. They care about Francis, each other. Francis is too unstable to handle this. Exactly. Francis. Over the authority to okay. me. Oh, I she missed signed. That last part. Okay, I see. Yeah. Oh my. Sorry. She signed over the authority to me. So, in addition to the disastrous Britney Spears and Amanda Bynes connections to Sam Lutfi that ended in multiple restraining orders, Lutfi has also tried to establish relationships with Lindsay Lohan and Michael Jackson's teenage daughter, Paris Jackson. This Lutfi creep, I just love Tom. I can't. He just, <laughs> <laughs> just says it like it is. Yeah. Tell it, Tom. This Lutfi creep seems to gravitate towards vulnerable female celebrities. So why should anyone care about this? Because no one wants to see a future headline in the news that reads Kurt Cobain's daughter found dead of a drug overdose or Francis Bean Cobain commits suicide just like her father. Wouldn't that be a little too convenient for Courtney Love and her good friend Sam Lutfi? Is there a new album in the works? Live through this again? Mm -hmm. So sick part burn, two, Mr. Grant. Sick uh, burn. He is savage. Part two, illustrating the current direct connection between Courtney Love and Sam Lutfi as it relates to the Isaiah Isaiah Silva's so kidnapping case and Sam's excessive bullying. So whoa. To begin part two of the Sam Lutfi files, I would like to respond to the above page six article. Oh, we're not gonna read the title is extremely misleading sure the headline is an attention getter and that's really what news editors want however let's get real here this is not about the battle for kurt cobain's guitar that's just the way this magazine simplified a more complex and potentially dangerous issue this is about harassment extortion and serious threats against a young lady with a seven-year-old child and her extended family. Of course, we expected Sam Lutfi to have some excuse for his angry threats and his screaming, thug-like tone of voice in the recorded conversations, but we would have never expected his excuse to be so very lame. It seems like... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, he just gives a good read. I'm not even going to lie. My hat's oh. off to you, Tom Grant, because uh, nobody appreciates a good church read like yours truly. They're not easy to do. Oh, yes. Um, one second, one second. A- uh, the analyst said, oh, thank you. Yes, she sent a picture that I was looking for. Thank you so much, the analyst. You you know exactly what I'm talking about. See, we learn to read each other's minds here in these streets. Okay, <laughs> so now I'm gonna have to remove this again for a second because I really want you to see this. All right, it's it's really. Um... One second. All right. 
So this is Courtney Love endorsed art of her husband. But um, but she has a problem with the autopsy report being released. But this is okay. This is absolutely fine. And it is, um, you know, displayed in museums. I mean, okay. Is it well done? If if I it, yeah, it's it's it, well. First of all, to be fair, it is absolutely inaccurate. It's an inaccurate portrayal of the scene. Well, correct. But as far as art goes, it's actually a very, it's actually a very good. In my opinion, I well, can appreciate yeah, but... it. Although, I, I mean, if if this is like if we were back in, um, I don't know, whenever they used to do paintings of scenes instead of being able to take photographs. Okay. This is clearly not one for the history books. This is not an accurate representation. And if, mm -hmm. because I'm, he's not my husband, he's not the father of my child. I can appreciate this in a different way. If it were my husband, the father of my child, this is not something that I would want to see hanging in any gallery ever. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, I, I find her, she's such a, the dichotomy in her is both fascinating and alarming all at once. Like what yeah. goes on in her brain? I don't want to be in there. Don't get me, don't get me wrong. I think I would, it's too chaotic for me, but I, there's part of me that just wants to ask her, what the hell are you thinking? Why well, are you like me, this? Like to me, I mean, uh, she had a narrative to push, and this was the narrative. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Why do I hear myself? Because my my phone decided to, to unmute itself. <laughs> it didn't decide to unmute itself. Alice stepped on the phone. That's what oh. happened. Yeah, she's up to her shenanigans again. You know, you can't be trusting this cat. She'd be wilding out. Anyway, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, Alice. Sorry about that. What were you saying I before forgot. I distracted you with <laughs> Alice's baloney? Yeah, no, I, I, I think this goes. So um, one thing that Courtney is a master at is spinning a story in her favor. And I think what she does is very calculated because she's not stupid. She's very intelligent. And something sh as shocking as this, um, ultimately in my opinion, is meant to um, foster sympathy for her. Mm -hmm. Because not only are we supposed to feel sorry for her because this is what she wants us to think her husband looked like, but also the, the other thing that we um, that's important about this is that as soon as she arrived to Seattle the morning his body was found, she walked right up into the scene and um, she said that she uh, she said that she like um, dipped her hands in his blood and put on his like bloody clothes and wore them and all kinds of inappropriate behavior. And, uh, you know, I think that was all part of that, of, of shaping that narrative where all the sympathy goes to her and, you know, not to mention, oh, whoopsie daisy, you know, conveniently, you know, a week to the day is when her new album, Live Through This, comes out. I mean, I, 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 I don't like to typically judge grief, okay, but everybody grieves in their own way, but she didn't really grieve in her own way because it was all public. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't private. It's not like she did these things privately and then spoke about them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. She, this was, it's, it, um, it seems like it was for show. It's hard. For, I mean, I, listen, I don't, I, I don't care for Courtney as a, as a person. And I certainly have never liked her music, but those are just opinions. There are other, there are people that like it and it's whatever. But I just find just the way she, she behaves is just so, I don't even have the words for it. It's, it's not even all that late, but my brain is done today. I'm sorry, you guys. I yeah. wish I could be a better but, conversationalist tonight, but I, my brain is just done. Let's finish with the Lutfi, uh, okay. with uh, Tom's um, Lutfi case, and we'll wrap it up for today. But I just want to, 
I just wanted to come on here and, you know, listen to Brittany's story with you guys, but then also, you know, connect the dots for you because Courtney is, in my opinion, already starting to uh, mold this into a narrative to suit her. Um, but, you know, we're not going to forget that you have a pending lawsuit, even though it's civil, but yeah. nevertheless, it is pending for kidnapping and attempted murder, Courtney Love. And we know that you like to hang out in England and you like to go to London and, you know, you like teapots and hands exactly. and and all, all the things. All the we, things. You know, we know, we know. But, you know, this is, this is not going to go away. Jen and Dr. B never forget. No. We might get distracted, but we don't forget. So actually, I'm not going to read this because all of this is in the complaint. And we talked that, about this, didn't we? We've already... Yes, I read the whole ass entire complaint. It is an hour and 45 minutes long. You can go see it, watch it. <laughs> and then we did a part two where we talked about Luckfee and all these guys. So that's that. But uh, there was one more thing that I... Oh, yes, uh, the social media posts. I do want to show... What did I do with them? Insanely... Ins uh, can I, I'm not reading this right. Oh, <laughs> insanely confused wants to know, Dr. B, what's tomorrow? Y'all going live. It's the what's roast. That? Tomorrow's Friday, oh, right? Yes. Are we on tomorrow. Friday? Mm -hmm. That's okay. right. Then then it, tomorrow is the part two of No Sweat Andy and his roast. Yes. And you know what? The stuff that I'm looking for now, actually, I'm just going to hold off on it because I think it goes, Apostle is here. Apostle. Yeah. You're going to join yeah. us Friday? Yeah. Hey, are we going to do it on this channel or are we going to do it on the, the Ward channel? We will do it on the Ward channel. So okay. tomorrow's, so yes, tomorrow's roast we're going to be doing on our sister channel, the Ward Case Studies. So um, I, I'll post it on our community page here at this channel so you get a notification or however that works. But okay. yes, tomorrow we'll be doing the roast on our sister channel. And I'm actually going to hold off on the screenshots that I was going to share next because I think it goes better with the Epstein stuff. So we'll get to, uh, um, we'll get to that whole ass thing. But yeah. Whole ass <laughs> is now our new professional term yes it is trademarked by jen lu whole ass trademark whole <laughs> ass 11 d billion 50 1100 and uh we got more yeah i say a lot of things what i say the other day and i oh geez a lu <laughs> and somebody said i'm stealing that and i was like who, who said that and she's like you did I don't be paying attention to stuff I say that cut like the crazy genisms that come out of my mouth aren't even planned. They just come out. I and I love them. <laughs> I love them. It's the magic that is me. <laughs> it is. Apostle says as a token of my depreciation, I may, but I am judging a spelling contest. <laughs> Well, listen, Apostle, Makes we sense. cannot do a roast without you in the comments cheering us on and giving us sage life and legal advice. You have to be there. We can't do it without <laughs> you. You're part of the team unofficially, but we need you. Absolutely. So, yes. So I think I got what I had to across tonight, which was number one. Britney Spears, that's so messed up what's happening. I hope they do free Britney Spears. It's been way overdue and and uh, too long. I hope the judge listens to her. So that's number one. Number two, no, Courtney, no. You do not get to ride the coattails of free Britney. You are not a victim. No. You would be the perpetrator. In Correct. The story. So, in every story. So just getting that straight, just making sure that that's somewhere on some sort of 
digital footprint for you. And so that's one. That's, or sorry, that's two, right? I don't know how to count. Don't ask me to count. <laughs> what are you doing to me? I can't maths right now. Later, later. Maybe tomorrow I can maths better. But yes, I think you're on point two. Yes. And then number three, don't forget to join us tomorrow for our part two roast of our no sweat uh, Andy Glandy <laughs> <laughs> on the ward case studies. And that's all we got. We're tired and um, it's been a long week. Thank you guys for listening and hashtag free Britney, hashtag free. justice for Kurt and hashtag save Silva. Amen. All right. Good night, lovelies. Good night, everyone. Thanks for joining us. See you tomorrow night. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.